$20 or $1. What is up guys, this is Alex back again from Team Generations here bringing you another video. This time something a little bit different, we haven't done anything like this before, I haven't really seen too many videos in general about this topic, so as you can probably guess by the title of the video, it is about custom markers. So I have a bunch of these, I just wanted to show you guys how I kind of made them, uh, I'll show you my collection, some of the materials that I did use for them, what I think about them in terms of tournament eligibility. Um, this video is in no way to say that the regular printed markers are trash or not worth it, anything like that. I own a bunch of them myself, I love them, I think they're really great. Um, but if you are on a budget or maybe just have a couple of these laying around, you just want to kind of do something to them, I think this is a cool way to kind of put a unique twist on it. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I will show you guys how to make these. Before we begin, I just want to give a huge shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for 50 subs now. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content. If you do enjoy this video, some of my other ones too, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like, thumbs up on this one. Yeah, just some opening thoughts on these guys. The lighter colors do tend to come out a bit better. Um, they don't show as many imperfections like some of the darker ones. If you don't fill in all of the white in between the lines, you will see that contrast a little bit more than the lighter guys. So if this is my first one, I definitely would try to go bright and light, more on like this side. Um, if you do really want to, go for the dark ones. I mean, nobody's gonna tell you how to do your custom markers. That is completely up to you. This is just a uh, personal opinion. They don't pop quite the same way as some of the real markers on the right hand side, but if you are on a budget or if you just have a couple of these laying around, this is a great alternative to really getting some color in there and really sprucing up some of your markers. So I find also that different paints come out a little bit different. So I'm gonna go over those now and show you just some differences, the materials and like how easy it really is and how cheap it is to, to fill these guys out. So yeah, let's jump right into that. All right, so the main material that we're really looking for here is like an acrylic paint or like a surface paint. Anything that's gonna stick to a glossy surface or like a finished surface. Um, I know wood paint kind of works for this too. The main ones that I started off using are actually these guys, these like Craft Smart, these like big um, containers of the paint. I just poured a little bit out. You need very, very small amounts. Like this will last me for, <laughs> I'll never run out of paint basically with the amount that we kind of use for these markers. There's not a lot at all. But like I said, the light colors do come out really, really well. So I would suggest getting something more along this line for your first project. That cost about like $5, I think. It was super cheap. They also come in like these kind of sets too. Um, these guys, I think this was like 10 bucks for this one. Really, really easy to do. Um, you take like a small, little fine, very, very fine uh, value pack, you know, these small brushes. And I find that it's pretty easy to put on there. My favorite way to really do these though are actually these paint pens, I have a bunch of them over here. Uh, I'm not gonna bring them all out, but I find that they're just vibrant, really easy to actually get pretty precise with. Um, some of these guys are a little bit more fine tipped than the others, but I find that in general, they are easier than a brush. Like I'm not an artist by any means, so very, very simple way to, you know, fill these in. And if you are buying a craft store, I think they should cover something, carry something like this. Again, this is like the same brand, I think is one of my other things, but this is just like a gloss varnish. I don't really put these on my markers. I know you can if you want to. Again, this is like a couple bucks. It's really not expensive at all. Um, I don't know how to finish them perfectly though. So I would say you don't need these. Just leave the cards out to dry for a couple hours or so. And to fix them up, if you really make a mistake, you know, a huge line somewhere, you can just literally take a toothpick and kind of edge out what you don't want. It's almost like a magic eraser. Like this surface paint dries on top of it and it, it brushes away pretty easily. That's why I would really use these guys without sleeves. If you plan on using your markers without sleeves, then I would probably put a varnish on there. But if not, totally cool. Just put it in a sleeve. I, I mean, this one has been around for about a year. I've used this all the time. It has not really lost any of its paint. It hasn't really chipped away. So I think we are good there. So let's get right into that little time-lapse video. I'll show you guys just how I personally make it and we will wrap up the video.
are done. You just saw that was super simple, super easy. Really nice way to get some color into your trigger lineup. This is a really fun idea if you are not willing to spend $30 on a trigger, whatever it may be. This is a nice way just to get some color in, like I said. This too, um, just a heads up, just like, I know this is gonna turn into a little bit of a rant, but if you go to like a tournament, let's say it's like a, a shop challenge, whatever it may be, I find that if you keep a couple of these with you, people are like really into them. Just have a couple on hand that you don't really want for yourself. You can maybe get them out to your opponents afterwards. Uh, every shop challenge that I've gone to, I've kind of met people that are not part of my playgroup, not part of my locals. I try to travel as much as I can regionally for them. Obviously very difficult to do so now, but great way to really meet some people, keep in contact with, maybe, you know, add them on Facebook, whatever. But Vanguard is one of those games where you get better by playing. Um, obviously this is true for all card games, but in things like Yu-Gi-Oh, you could sit there with practice hands, etc, etc. And just learn how to lock your opponent out from playing. With Vanguard, I feel like it's so much ebb and flow, learning the different matchups. So if you have people outside of your playgroup, that really helps you get better. More games logged, the better you'll be, the better you'll be, the more fun you'll have, in my opinion. So I hope these triggers help out maybe like a new player or just anybody having difficulty finding other people to play with. Again, I know it is a pandemic right now, so this could be a nice little craft just to uh, pass some time. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys haven't already, Please leave that like and uh, subscription to the channel. We have more content on the way. And this is Alex from Team Generations, signing out.